cross. Right hand sweep. Also glad. Good afternoon, sir. Hey, how you doing? I am good. I'm good. You and I have met uh, before, right? Yes. About a day or two ago, we had a chance to chat outside. Yes. And you were kind enough to discuss with me um, your recollection of things that happened back in 2013. True? Yes. All right. Um, I think, and, and you tell me if I'm right or not, that we also talked about um, the description of the individuals that you saw on that day. Remember? Mm-hmm. And specifically, we talked about um, the gentleman that you grabbed a hold of, the guy who had, who had had the injury to the back. Yes. And just to be clear, he had a gunshot to the back, right? Yes. Okay. And the other guy who was on the on the ground next to the car that was um, that was, I guess, apprehended by Officer Davis. Um, was also suffering from a gunshot wound. Is that right? Yes. Okay. As a matter of fact, those um, pictures that we saw up a little while ago with all the blood stains, that's where um, I think you used the word bleeding out. That's where your guy was bleeding out on kind of the left side, the back of the car, right? With my guy? Yeah. Yeah, he was bleeding in the back. Right, but in terms well, her of... her guy was the one that was doing all the bleeding, so... He was the, he was the one on, on the ground. Yes. Um... The guy that you, actually, let me back up a little bit, okay? Let me kind of start from the beginning. You and Davis are sitting in the car, right? Yes. Um, this car comes kind of flying out of nowhere, lands on the on the ground, and ends up smack against the, uh, the laundromat, true? Yes. Okay. Um, you see individuals get out of the car yes. and run, right? Your description or your recollection is that it's four, maybe five individuals, right? Yes. Okay. Um, the person who Officer Davis ended up uh, apprehending or, or interacting with, that person got out of the rear passenger seat of the car. Is that right? That's where I've seen him at, yes. Okay, that's where you saw him at. Um, fair to say that person didn't get very far. No. All right. Um, he, the gunshot that he had was to, was it to the leg, the groin area, something like that? Yeah, it was to the groin area. Now, which side, I can't say. Okay, but, but he... <laughs> he wasn't very mobile, true? No. Okay. All right. So we know that that guy um, who was in the car is out, and he's laying on the ground. He had on a red shirt, did he not? I don't remember. Okay. All right. The guy who um, got out of the car that you grabbed a hold of, where did he? Where was he in the car? Do you recall? No. I don't recall which, if he was in the front, back. I'm not sure. Okay. But he was a big guy. Yes. He was easily over six feet tall. Yes. Um, now, I heard uh, 300 pounds thrown around a little while ago. He mm -hmm. was in the area of about 300 pounds. So you can be 283, 305, 310. Somewhere. He was a big guy. Yeah. You're a big guy. Yeah. I think you told me the other day, you're a little bigger now than you were back then. Back then, you were kind of slimmer, trimmer, that sort of thing. My words. You yeah. were smaller. Well, I'd say more toned. Toned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. You got you got thick fine over there. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, but it was a big. He was a big dude. Yeah. And he had a gunshot to the back. Mm -hmm. and he was bleeding as well. Mm -hmm. I think it was close to like the shoulder blade areas. Okay. One of the things I think you testified to, and maybe you told me also, is that you were holding him, and it was after a while that you realized you had blood all over your, your arm that was coming from him. From yeah, from when I grabbed him to the back of his collar. Okay. He had on a blue shirt. It was like a light blue. Okay. So we've got the guy on the ground with Davis who has on a shirt. You don't remember the color, right? Mm -hmm. But you know that the big guy who got out of wherever in the car he got out, he had on a blue shirt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, there were... Other individuals, you said four, maybe five, altogether, right? But at, at least two others you saw go towards the right of, of where the car landed, right? Yes. All right. Would I be correct in, in saying that you you don't really have, you can't recall a good description of those individuals? No. If I were to ask you what they were wearing, you couldn't recall? No, sir. If I were to ask you what they looked like, hairstyle, that sort of thing, you couldn't really recall? No. Okay. All right. Um, were you aware of someone else with a blue shirt being apprehended somewhere around the corner? No. Okay. Um, the vehicle that uh, that was crashed against the, the, 
the laundromat. It was a, kind of a small car, right? Was it? What was it? An Altima? I don't. I don't remember the make and model. It wasn't a big car. No, it wasn't no big large sedan. There were okay four doors. Okay. Um, it's fair to say that y your role in this kind of started with that car coming over and, and dropping there on, on the ground and ended with you and Davis um, kind of interacting with and apprehending these two individuals. Right? Yes. Um, you didn't conduct any additional investigation. No. Right? Oh, the laundromat. Um, you're familiar with that laundromat. I mean, you were familiar with it back then, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, are you aware of whether there are um, cameras in that laundromat or in or around that laundromat? No, I don't recall. Okay. Not saying that they're not. You just, you don't recall. No. Okay. And, and, and granted, this was a little over 10 years ago. Fair? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, would I be correct in, in saying that you're not sure about whether or not there were cameras on the, on the side of the laundromat closer to that? Uh, what you described as a retaining wall. Mm -hmm. Right. Did you have any interaction with the um, other detectives or investigators who showed up on the scene? I mean, they all showed up on scene. We was all right there in the parking lot. Okay. And I was just trying to find out what was going on. Okay. Um, did you have any conversations with with any detectives or any, any other officers about... Um, about uh, getting video from the owner of the laundromat. No. Did you have any conversations with that? No, I don't call any. No. Did you talk to, or do you, you know, Officer uh, Detective Quinn? Mm hmm. D did, did you see him on that day? I can't, I don't remember. Okay. What about Velasquez? You know Velasquez? Yes. Okay. Did you have conversation with him on that day? I don't remember. Okay. There is a crime scene, well, was there a crime scene unit that showed up on the scene? Yes. Okay. Um, you would not have had any interaction with the crime scene unit, correct? No, I really don't have no recall of that either. All I remember is just dealing with what we was dealing with right there, but as for investigation purpose-wise... Wasn't you? No. Okay. All right. You don't know what happened before that car came sailing out of the sky, right? What was going on with the car? No. Okay. Um... The, the photo um, that you were shown earlier, and if I can have um, uh, photo one, I think that's 150C. Put back up for me, please. All right. You can see it on the, on the screen next on, to your left? Yes. All right. This is a, an overhead, um, kind of like a satellite um, depiction of the the entire area is that right yes this is um you would agree with me this is a depiction from the common day from today from the 2000 and what have we in 24 2024 right with the green trees yeah well okay maybe some well, maybe winter time no. all right let me let me put it this way right <laughs> <laughs> it is winter time um and trees on green. Yes. Um, this is not what the area looked like back in 2013. Am I, am I, is it fair to say? I mean, a little, a little difference. I know it used to be a McDonald's, but I can't remember if the McDonald's was there then either. Okay. Fair to say that looking at this, at this picture, you can, you know it, and you know the area because you've patrolled that area. You've been there since 04. Yeah. Okay. So, so you can look at this photograph and you can say, well, that's the Summerdale Commons apartment complex. And you can see where the Skyline laundromat is. But, but the truth is, as we're looking at it, you can't see the fences that you're talking about that you'd have to navigate to get from one location to the next. True? Yes, that's true. Okay. Um, and although we, we see Cleveland Avenue, we see, um, you see what I read, the red uh, pin, whatever they call it, yeah. is? All right. That, that's essentially indicating where the entrance to, the, to that part of Somerdale Commons apartment is, right? Mm-hmm. Right. But it's fair to say that you can't see, like you see where the laundromat is, but you don't see the houses that are obscured by the trees right in front of the laundromat, right? I can see two. Okay. You talking about the ones with the red tops? Um, there's a space, but I'm not sure. But 
There's a space. You want me to show it up here? All right. Can, can, I, can I question with the judge? You may, sir. All right. All right. I'm going to play teacher for a second. I'm going to use this. Turn around for me if you get a chance, okay? All right. So uh, that's how long you're at, right? No. No? No. Where's the laundromat? Where the blue? Right here? There it is. Okay, so that's a laundromat. Yeah. And this is... The tree is covering that um part of the area where, I was, where we was at. Yeah. Right here, right? Mm-hmm. And then, aren't there some houses, like, right here? Yeah, I'm thinking that's a house right there that looks like... Okay, but you can't really see that, right? No. Okay, but there's some house. There's a house here. Uh -huh. There's a fence here. Yep. And then there's a wall that comes down. That's where you guys were sitting in the car, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you recall um, uh, helicopter units that, that came out on that day? Yeah. You do? Yeah, because that's when all the noise and stuff started. Okay. Like, everything was quiet, and, like, everything just broke out. Next thing you know, you got a car dropping out of the sky. No, I'm talking about after that. Then you got helicopters flying up above. Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, though, you weren't involved with that portion of it in terms of looking for anyone or anything like that, right? Who? You know, you know who um, Officer Bridget Porter is? Yeah, she's an investigator. Investigator. Uh, she was, do you recall seeing her on that day? Yes. Okay. Um, and you were subpoenaed to come here to testify. You were outside in the hallway, right? So again? You were subpoenaed to come and testify, and before you came in, you were outside in the hallway. Yes. Okay. You see Bridget Porter out there? No. All right. Thank you. That's all I have. Any further cross? Mr. Sharp? Good afternoon, sir. Hey, how you doing? Wonderful. How are you? Okay. Does Investigator Porter still work for APD? Yes. Uh, so she's local? That part? I don't know what department that she's in, but she's, she's an investigator with us, yes. For Atlanta Police Department? Yes. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Any redirect, sir? Briefly, Your Honor. Officer Black? The state's is in the 150 Charlie you were just discussing with Mr. Adams. How do you know that you can get from coin laundry to that second portion of the Somerville apartment complex on foot? How do I know? Yeah. I've seen the fence. Uh, yeah, it's the fence that's basically separating those houses, backyards, that leads right on over to the second phase over there of um, apartments, and there's a fence that's separating the apartment building and that last house just north of the um, complex. Is the fence, as you had just discussed, any higher or longer than the fence you would have had to initially scale to get over right where your car crashed? Well, the fence that's at the country, the lawn, I mean, the laundromat, the coin laundry place, is high with uh, wires on it. Those are just regular chain link fence to the backyards of um, people's property. So now they're basically short. Thank you, Officer Black. No further questions, Your Honor. Anything further, Mr. Adams? I just got one last question. All right. Okay, two last questions. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Anything further? We'll see. Hedging my bets. Um, <laughs> um, the, when you saw the other individuals who got out of the car and, and went to the right, you don't know where they went to be. All I know, they went to the fence. That's it. All right. That's all. Thank you. All right, sir. Mr. Shard, anything else? Okay. Anyone else? <coughs> all right. Anything further, Mr. Uh, Atkins? No, Your Honor. All right. Uh, all right. At this point in time. May Senior Patrol Officer Black be permanently, temporarily excuse the witness. Permanently, Your Honor. All right, Officer Black, appreciate your patience with us. I'm going to go ahead and permanently excuse you as a witness. You're free to go about your user duties and advocation. Just don't discuss your testimony with anybody except the attorneys in this case, okay? Gotcha. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. All right.